Wow. Today we're going to be solving the equation sine of the natural log of 1 plus xi all equal to 2i. So how do we approach this problem that I definitely didn't make up myself? Well, this is what we've got to do. So we have to remember that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. And we also know, because of this fact, that sine of alpha is going to also be equal to e to the i alpha minus e to the minus i alpha all over 2i. We can use this fact and we can put this ln of 1 plus xi in for alpha. We can do the rest from there and we all know that it's going to be equal to 2i because, well, that's what the equation is equal to in the first place. But anyways, so we substitute ln of 1 plus xi for alpha. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to get sine of ln, or well, actual log, of 1 plus xi all equal to, with 2i at the bottom, we're going to have e to the i of ln of 1 plus xi minus e to the minus i of ln of 1 plus xi. Now look at this. We can bring this i to the front, well, inside the ln as a power, and we can cancel out the lns. Let's take one thing at a time first. So then this is going to be equal to 2i there, then e to the ln of 1 plus xi. If we bring the i to the top here, so i there, and then minus e, and then that minus i we can also put to the top. So we're going to get ln of 1 plus xi with the negative i at the top there. The e and the lns will cancel out. So then we're going to get... A few moments later. Okay. 1 plus xi, power of i, minus, not e, 1 plus xi, oh, well, that's just terrible, minus i there, and all over 2i. And of course, what was the original thing equal to? 2i. Okay, this is what we can do now. We can multiply both sides by 2i. Multiply by 2i. Multiply by 2i. So then that and that will cancel out. And if we simplify the right hand side there, that's just going to become negative 4 because i squared is equal to negative 1 and then negative 1 times 2 times 2, which is 4, so negative 4. So, you know, 1 plus xi power of i minus 1 plus xi to the power of negative i, which is then going to be equal to negative 4. And now, let's multiply both sides by negative 1, so then we can get rid of the negative on that side, on the right side, I mean. We'll be fine. We don't like negative numbers in math, so it's to make things a little bit hard and a little bit messy. But anyway, whatever. Whole thing times this by negative 1. I'll just use the negative sign there. There we go. Okay. So then we're going to get 1 plus xi. So the negative i is going to be at the front. Well, I mean, that, that whole term, I mean. And then minus the 1 plus xi. Power of i. Which is then equal to 4. And now, this is what we can do. This negative i, right, as a power... We can then bring that to another equivalent form, which is then going to be 1 over 1 plus xi to the power of i. That was not neat. That was not neat. Power of i minus 1 plus xi to the power of i is then equal to 4. And now I'm thinking what we do if we want to go from here. Let's let this thing here, 1 plus xi all to the power of i, we're going to let that be equal to z. 
So then, you're going to have 1 over z minus z equals 4. We need common denominators, so we can put a squared there, and then a z. So then we're going to have 1 minus z squared. Uh, wrong way. There we go. All over z, which is then equal to 4. Multiply both sides by z, so we're going to get 1 minus z squared equals to 4z. We're going to have a quadratic now, so we can bring everything to one side, so then one of the sides is just going to be equal to 0. So then we're going to have negative... Negative z squared, bring the minus, no, bring the 4z to the side, so we're going to have minus 4z. And we have the 1, so that's going to be plus 1. And of course, we can then multiply both sides by negative 1, so then we're going to get z squared plus 4z minus 1 equals z. Let's use the quadratic formula to solve for z. So then we are going to get z equals... Go. So we're there, so then that one there, so we're going to have two. The one there. Then we're going to have the minus b, so that's going to be minus four there. So minus, we're going to square that four less than 16, and then minus four, and then the a, which is the one, and then the minus one, which goes into there. But let me just tell you, that z is then going to be equal to the 2 at the bottom, minus 4, plus or minus square root of 20, which is then just equal to minus 4 plus or minus 2 root 5. With 2 at the bottom, 2 and 2 cancel out, that's just 2. So then z is therefore going to be equal to minus 2, plus or minus the square root 5. That's our z. And we need to remember that our z was originally equal to 1 plus xi. It's the power of i. It's then equal to minus 2, plus or minus root 5. Well, we can then put this whole thing to the power of minus i. Because then, with the power of exponents, that i there, on the left-hand side, times the minus i, right? i squared is going to be negative 1. So then negative 1 times that negative that we put everything to the power of, that's just going to cancel out to be 1. So then we're indeed just going to have 1 plus xi equals... What? So something is glitching out here. Yeah, I do not know what. Plus the minus, the root 5. And then the minus i. So then, we mean the 1 on both sides. So we're going to get xi equals minus 2 plus or minus root 5. Power of negative i minus 1. And then we can divide both sides. Actually, no, let's times both sides by negative i. So negative i thing here. So then that and that will cancel out. So therefore, x is going to be equal to... Yep, yeah, okay. So x is going to be equal to... Negative i of minus 2 plus or minus square root of 5 power of negative i, and then minus, no, no, plus, plus i. But because in the original ex equation, if I go all the way up to the top, this was a result of a sign. Yeah, of a sign, that makes sense, yeah. And because we know from the unit circle that you can go round, round, around infinitely many times. So then, we need to add a 2k pi here to make up for that. We have the plus or minus there, so it makes sense for the, the first, second hand quadrant of the unit circle. But anyways, a 2k pi there, where k is going to be an integer. And therefore, we...
we now have our answer. There we go. And box that up. Oh, terrible box. It wasn't even a box, but whatever. There we go. Nice. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay curious, keep learning maths. If you have any suggestions for what to do in future videos, please let me know. Please let me know down below in the comment section. Bye for now.